Hey everybody, another episode. Sam Dennehy here, Have As Presents the Podcast. Um, special guest today is Zoe Kirk Robinson. Some of you may not know her, but the people that do know her will know that she is part of Jennifer Kirk. Uh, in, in her YouTube channel and her group of friends and her little world, they are in the same world and Zoe models. Um, uh, I think I'll be honest. I don't know exactly what Zoe models. I know she's a modeler. I know, um, she helps Jennifer Kirk, uh, do the Monday club. And I know, I don't know much about Zoe. <laughs> I know that she's a modeler, though, and that's what this podcast is for. This podcast is to get inside the modeler's head and to figure out what they love about this hobby. And it doesn't have to be trains or cars. It can just be models in general um, because we all share the same passion. So that's basically what this is for. To let everybody know this person is a modeler and... Let's find out more about them. So without further ado, let's talk to Zoe. Stay tuned. All right. Looks like it's recording. Hey, everybody out there. Sam Dennehy, a.k.a. Half-Ass Customs. And this is Half-Ass Presents, the podcast. Like I said in the monologue, today's special guest is Zoe Kirk Robinson. Uh... Like I said in the monologue, I don't know a lot about Zoe. I know she's a big uh, part of the Monday Club with Jennifer Kirk. So without further ado, Jen- Zoe, <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got in this hobby? Hi, um, I'm Zoe Kirk Robinson. I'm a stand-up comedian. And uh, my way of getting into this hobby was actually my dad. He uh, took me to a, a, a shop in, uh, what was it? The Metro Center. It's a it's a massive, massive uh, retail complex. I think it's the biggest in Europe, and it's like a small village that's all shops. And one of those shops wow. it was a huge model shop full of Airfix and uh, Revel and Italeri and things like that, where it was basically just heaven for anyone who wants to make bottles. And he picked me out a Spitfire and said, "Here, try building this. You like aircraft? Try building this." So I did, and I did a terrible, terrible job of it. <laughs> but it we got me into the hobby. Terrible job. <laughs> you never forget your first one. Very true. I remember my first model it was a 125th scale. Uh, I think it was a Mustang drag racing car, like that goes down the quarter mile. Oh, and wow. uh, I built it all with this uh, really thick glue, so there's over glue everywhere. And I put the windows in and I had everything and then I spray painted it. So spray paint went all over the car. There's no window anymore. There's just one big black blob of junk. <laughs> I bet you learned a lot from it though. Well, I, I never built another one for probably five years after that. I said, this isn't really my thing. <laughs> but that's and the thing about <laughs> that's the thing about model making. You might not come back to it straight away, but you do come back to it. Oh, yes, definitely. I'll tell you, I don't know. I, I, so with that first model, did you stick with it after that? Or did you kind of window off and then come back to modeling later on in your life? A bit of both. Uh, back in the day when I was a kid, I, I would uh, use my pocket money and get whatever models I could. Because I actually did like the creative part of putting it together. And it's like a puzzle. But it's yeah, also... Oh, yeah, you, You've got something real and substantial once you're finished. So I had a Mesher Smith to fight with my Spitfire. And then I decided that, well, the Allies need reinforcements. So I got I got myself a, a Boeing Flying Fortress. And my oh, wow. goodness, that one took me a long time to put together. Dude, I used to love plane. the aircraft. It is. It's a big one. I think I had a Liberator as well. That was a big one. So I always liked the planes. It was always about putting the planes together and then as a trophy my dad would help me fix it to my bedroom ceiling and by the end of uh, 
wow, my goodness, about three or four years in, I had a massive dog fight over my bed. It was great. <laughs> That's awesome. I've seen in the latest, like, um, it's sort of diorama-ish, sort of uh, uh, LED, sort of uh, bringing life to the model that a lot of people lately are starting to put like the rock or the the bombs or the rockets uh launching off the wing or whatever and they're having the cotton balls as the smoke and then they're putting an led light in there so it looks like it's fire coming off the back of the rocket but it's all just still it's not moving it's just still like a, a screenshot in time of it just launching that rocket to go in wherever and they're hanging that from their their ceilings or putting it in like a small diorama frame on their wall you oh know as an action scene and that sounds amazing I, i'm not really into planes but that idea of bringing life to a steel model is incredible it's so neat because i mean the model yeah. car guys and model plate or model boats and or ships or like sci-fi they've been putting led and fiber optics in their models for years mm. and now these guys with like air airplanes like fighter jets are now putting that technology into their scenes and it's it's really neat to see that. That is amazing. I have seen it in boats. Uh, on one of the thing, one of the projects that Jen did, the uh, the War of the Worlds build that she had, uh, her yeah. companion Les Cliff was... put the Thunder Child yes. with all the fire. I can imagine that putting that into a into putting a rocket on that would be amazing. Oh my yeah. goodness! Bil building a space shuttle and then uh -huh. having the effects of it launching. That would be right, amazing. Right. Oh, I yeah, have to do that cotton sometime. Balls or, or yeah. you know, uh, cotton swamps or whatever, and then you stick the LEDs inside of there, and it can either be in the in the ship or down at the base of the bottle or whatever. It looks like it's just free. And some of them, like, uh, flicker, you know, so it looks like it's the fire's really going or the yeah. whatever it is that's launching it. Oh, I have so, yeah, to try that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a neat concept for, you know, the yeah. new version of, model making really and that's another thing so, about the hobby that's so good it, it hasn't the core thing hasn't changed you're still building models and all, often right. in the same way that uh, your grandfather would have but adding oh, yeah. these extra little bits it has moved on and it's enhanced it rather than trying to replace it with other things it's just enhanced what was already there i think that's great yeah well think about 40 years ago you're building a model railroading uh downtown and you got all these buildings for your downtown and there's no interiors for them at all. And now, 40 years later, 3D printing and then model uh, shops and, and companies are starting to build the detail parts. Like you said, it's the same thing you've been doing your whole life, but they're just adding new things to add to it. Yeah. It's really cool. It's a really good part of our, our, our hobby now is the technology that's coming out to bring things to life. Yes, and speaking of 3D printing, I've, I'm actually doing a project at the moment, literally as uh, as I was waiting for it to come on, I've just dropped a CD on the floor, hopefully it's not one I need. <laughs> I've got a 3D printed top to a locomotive that I'm uh, painting up for, it's a, a bit of a challenge. If I can get it done by the end of this month, which hopefully I will, then a charity is going to get paid some money by the company that uh, printed it. So 3D oh, printing cool. in so many different ways. It's just bringing things, because that particular model, it looks a lot from, I'm not a trained person. It looks a, <laughs> I'm it not looks, really neither. I'm more just a modeler. So Yeah, <laughs> it, looks, it looks an awful lot like every other train I've ever seen of that style. <laughs> but apparently it's not produced yeah. by the, the main manufacturer, so you can't get it unless you custom build. And now they're just making mm -hmm. 3D copies of it, and you can just print them. That's cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I just... um. I, I saw, I, I'm big into movies and I love Back to the Future trilogy. I love those movies and I love the car. I love the characters. And I just found a guy. I think he's in Europe somewhere or maybe he's, I have no idea. He's not in the States. And he built uh, the DeLorean from the third movie being towed by the horses, trying to get the speed up to 88, which would never happen with horses. But yeah. he's building that scene. And then the, he just posted yesterday, no kidding, the, a 3D CAD 
of the train from the very last scene of the trilogy movie. So part three, at the very last end of the movie, the flying train. Somebody came up with a 3D CAD for that, and he put it on Facebook. And I asked my friend who's got a 3D printer. I said, "Dude, I'll give you the money right now. Let's buy this, print it. I need to have that. I have to. I have to. Have to. Have to." And so、yeah. he said he started printing it last night. I don't know if he did or not, but I mean, I gave him the money. He he got the the print. So now we're literally trying to get it printed and scaled. So、oh, we'll see how that works. Fantastic! That is、yeah. amazing. Because, no, you, like you, you said, that that model doesn't exist. That version, the the flying version of that、yeah. movie train, doesn't exist. So you'd have to scratch build almost every part of that and put it on one of these Tyco. Trains. You have to like、yeah. scale the whole thing, and you know, and I, I. That's why I have that. I wanted to do that. I thought that is so much work. There's so many little detail parts to that future train. I, I really、yeah. don't want to spend the time on it. But now, if I can just three D print the whole thing, then all I gotta、not? do is paint it. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is an amazing project. Yeah. So hopefully, that'll come out.、Uh, Pretty well, and there won't be much、uh, body work that needs to be done to make it look better. Hopefully, it prints out great, but you know, who knows? I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, hopefully, the, the printing that happens these days, I'm sure it'll be fine. That it's amazing、right. how quickly that stuff has come on. Because I remember when I first saw 3D printing, it was slow and everything looked a little bit off. But now,、oh, yeah. it looks brilliant. Right. Well, I just um. I'll show you something real quick. I just built a diorama of. I think you guys had it out there in the UK, but、uh, the Flintstones cartoon. Oh, we had from, the Flintstones,、um, yeah. Yeah. So I just built this diorama of the Flintstones house with the garage and、oh. Barney's little car, and then、uh, you got a friend Flintstones car. Right there, and that's、oh. made out of real twigs and wood from the backyard.、Um, oh my goodness! But the important thing was the figurines. These figurines are three D printed from Shapeway, and they、wow. came out almost like a resin three D printer. It was so perfect. I didn't do nothing to the to the figurines, but just paint them, and they're、wow. completely smooth and perfect in every way. It was、that、really amazing.、Superb. Oh my goodness!、Yeah. That is a, that is wonderful. Right. I and I was very very iffy. Like, oh, they're not going to be that good because of whatever reason. But they came out so unbelievably well. Oh my goodness! I didn't have to do no work to them to get them right. I even、that、took some、fantastic. really cheap figurines and painted them up to look like Fred and Wilma, thinking that that three D printing ver. A、version of them were going to be crap, and so now I'm not even using these two because <laughs> the other、wow. two, the other ones look great. <laughs> yeah, but the 3D printing in general is just—it's coming along so well, and it's funny because I was watching—I think the latest last month, this Monday's Monday Club—and you had referenced things that have come true from Star Trek because of, you know, 3D printing, and you had mentioned something else, but. The 3D printer is going to become probably ten, twenty years the replicator from Star Absolute. Trek. Absolutely,、yeah. it is. They're even 3D、right. printing houses now. There's right, all yeah, kinds. Yeah. The the future is amazing. Well, I was watch. I was. I don't know where I got this, and I don't know how I even caught it or whatever. But I caught a YouTube video of a tech convention in Japan. And they were talking about four years ago, right when 3D printing just like kind of went worldwide, and and everybody knows about it. But the technology was still very grainy and very rough. They were talking about they took some ingredients for food and put it through the 3D printer and printed an apple that you can eat. And I thought that's the replicator from Star Trek. That's it. Next, you just、yeah. need coffee and a cup. That it's it's right there. They're already doing it. Oh my goodness, a, th- a 3D printed apple. Yeah, I mean I it didn't... probably didn't taste very good, but it was, you could still eat it at least. <laughs> yeah, but just to think, it might not taste great, but that thing didn't ha- didn't exist before. That is a <laughs> amazing step. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, wow. exactly. And uh, I just, um, I also saw somewhere on YouTube or Facebook, somebody made HO scale chain link uh, chain and each chain was separate to where you can wiggle the whole chain like this and it would go in HO scale. Oh so goodness. that was 3D printed in order to be able to do that, to wiggle and all the little linkages be separate to where they weren't just, you know, a piece of plastic that was straight. You could wiggle it and it just wiggled. So if you can get a 3D printer to do that, oh my gosh, it's the technology is just crazy. Yeah, that, and that's another thing. That level of resolution wasn't there just a few years ago. Oh, no, it probably wasn't to... even there last year, to be yeah, honest you, with you. You wouldn't have been able to do that. So, wow, the, the possibilities for modeling. Yeah, right. Uh, you could probably print out a whole entire locomotive from start to finish that actually runs on a track. <laughs> yeah, at some point, someone is going to do that. Yeah, right. And, and then we won't need to be buying any locomotives from that. Hopefully they don't do that because if that happens, all you need is a 3D CAD and then nobody's going to be buying locomotives no more. They can just print it in their own house. That but. is true. That, that, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, perhaps the manufacturers will change from uh, producing this stuff to perhaps just designing a, a new, here's our latest right. uh, design. You can print it yourself. Yeah, right. right. Or and if you'd like you one can... that's already printed and colored and everything, well, here's the one we've got earlier. Yeah, we'll, we'll charge you double or triple because we painted it, we made sure it's running and we put it through all the tests. But, you know, if not, then here's the 3D print that you can just print yourself. It essentially, yeah, puts, a, it essentially puts another level in the market. We've got the kits at the oh, moment yeah. and the ready to run stuff. Well, here's ready to print. Right, right, right. I, that's, I can see that coming because, I mean, you see just from, you know, Jennifer's... Uh, videos of the latest products and little reviews that she does that there's so much stuff out there and most of it you have to build some of it like the electronic stuff you can pretty much like buy and, and plug and play yeah. you know like say woodland scenics 3d or led lighting or something you can yeah. just buy it plug it in and it works pretty soon you won't have to buy that product you can just probably print a version of it and it'll do the same thing it's it's gonna be a scary world at that point but it'll be a neat one at the same time because the options are kind of endless absolutely and it's going to be very interesting to watch how it develops right i i i have a 3d printer it's one of those uh spool fed ones so like oh, the yeah. old school it's not the resin or whatever and I can't get it to work. And my friend that I had print or try to print that uh, that Back to the Future train, um, he came over to my house and tried to get it. We can't get the table level and it's not really working any, anymore. I mean, it works perfect. I just can't get it to work right. Um, and so I have it and it's driving me crazy because there's all these ideas, these you know, things that are out there that I wish I could just, I have the technology in my house. Why can't I use it? It's just yeah. driving me crazy. I can, I can imagine the frustration because it's, it, but it's, it's right here. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I, I even told them, and I, I said in a couple of the episodes, I said, the technology to use 3D CAD is beyond my comprehension right now. I have to really like sit down and take a lot of time to study it and figure out how to 3D model something and make sure the dimensions are right and whatever i said i want it to be so simple where i can literally take the picture of what i want drag it to the printer click it and it starts printing it in the scale that i want hmm. that's a simple and then not only just print it paint it for me too <laughs> it could be a print and paint booth all in one <laughs> that can't be that long off someone is going to do that i think it's it's sooner than later but it's just not right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my so, goodness. With your models, do you still currently uh, favor those airplanes more, or do you now kind of just build whatever? Uh, I think with me, it's still the aircraft. I love aircraft. I've actually, to try and re rekindle my youth, I have as my next project a Spitfire. <laughs> It's ready nice. for me to start off. 
I'm very much a fan of aircraft. Uh, Jens promised me that this one shall actually put uh, on a little uh, mechanism above Weir Yard for the Monday Club, but we'll wait and see nice. whether that actually happens or not. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> that's I 170 have... second scale. Uh, yeah. I think it is. Uh, is it? Yes, 170 second. It's close enough to HO to where if it's in the air hanging, swirling or something, it'll be fine. Yeah, that's what that's uh, the argument I make. If, if uh, I produced, I built a Cessna. It took me years to find a model for a Cessna, and when I built it, Jen looked at it and went, "It's very nice, but it's too big for where you are." So, well, just put it in the air and say right. it's it's closer to you than the ground is. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, why it looks help bigger. That you're two hundred feet tall, <laughs> but uh, she wasn't having any of it. <laughs> Never mind. Well, I'll, I'll this keep one it. She'll help you with. <laughs> well, that's the idea. Yeah. Where I'm hoping that she'll do it. Right. But yeah, it's mainly that's the aircraft cool. at the moment. I've never really been into aircraft. I, I admire them for what they are. I, I appreciate what they do and what they offer. I mean, I've been across the country. And I've been to the UK before, and I've been to Europe. So, obviously, I had to take a plane to get all those places because a boat would have took too long, and you can't drive across to get to UK from here. You, so, you can, technically, <laughs> but you might need to bring some oxygen with you. Yeah, right. I need the double O. Is it the double O seven underwater car? <laughs> yeah, I might need that one. But um, yeah, so I appreciate what they do and what they are. I just never really had the urge to build one. But I have recently, and when I say recent, probably within the last 10 years, in America, they restored a B-2 bomber. And it goes throughout the, the the air shows throughout the country. Right. And I saw that thing flying, and that thing was magnificent. It was so unbelievable. And I was driving home from work one day, and I lived right across the street from a private airport for like private jets and then propeller airplanes and whatnot. That an air show there. That thing was coming in for a landing, and. There is nothing but traffic because the airport's completely open to from you can see from the freeway. So all the cars were slowing down because of the air show going on. They all wanted to see what was going on there. So this yeah. thing's coming for a landing and it's probably going 35 miles an hour in the air. It looked like it was floating, but my car in traffic was going faster than this plane coming in for a landing. And I thought that thing is defying gravity. That is amazing. It doesn't make any sense. But it was at the air show, and I, I went to the air show the day before, and it was just sitting on the tarmac for people to look at. It was unbelievable. That thing is – talk about a, a, a back – like looking back in time at the way things were. Yeah. And the crap that those things were able to put up with in the war and to come home limping home with maybe one propeller work, you know, one jet or whatever, just limping home and it, just wow. Those planes are amazing. They are. It, and that's the thing about aircraft. They're, even with the propellers off, they can still stay in the air for a while. Just because of the way that all of the dynamics can give it that bit of lift. It, right, right. I've never flown a plane myself, but I have done a lot of the training in simulators. And when, oh, okay. the, when the instructor tells you, okay, turn the engines off, I say, but, but I'm in the air. I can't do that. <laughs> But no, you can you can uh, you can do it. It's a it is a weird, very strange experience to try and bring an aircraft in with just no engines. It's right? Like, no, I, I, I don't like I don't like this. This is, this is wrong. Right? Because even if you're in a passenger jet, like you're flying across your country or you're flying to another country, they don't turn their engines off. You oh, hear those not. engines going, and then once you land, you hear them even louder because they're blowing the opposite way to slow that plane down yeah so yeah <laughs> they don't do that so it's crazy to think that a prop propeller plane or a smaller version of a plane would do that <laughs> yeah but of course it's part of the training you've got to know how to land an aircraft in an emergency you wouldn't have your engine True. so you've got to learn but it's scary it's it's too bad you can't be taught that after you already mastered flying in general because if you couldn't fly it the, and you're comfortable, then teach you how to turn, turn the engine off and land it. <laughs> yeah, you'd have thought they'd do it that way, but they like—they <laughs> right. seem to like to throw you in at the deep end. 
Yeah. Well, I guess you you learn the same way either way. So who knows? Yeah. I, it's probably just like modeling. You can you can sit down with somebody and teach them exactly how to to model a building or a train or a car or whatever, or you can just say, "Here's the directions, figure it out," and then I'll watch you, but I won't give you any tips, and we'll see how you do. <laughs> you still learn, but it's not the same. <laughs> it, it it isn't. <laughs> Although. Excuse me. Some of these model kits that you can get these days, they're designed for someone who... Oh, my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> for the, some of the model kits you can get these days, they are designed for people who haven't got anyone to teach them. So, well, oh, yeah. We'll yeah, take yeah, you yeah. right from the start. You click it together. You don't even need to deal with uh, the cement. You just stick right. it together, and it's perfectly fine. So I suppose yeah. there are there, there are at least some le uh, ways to flatten out that learning curve a bit. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's funny. It's it's cool that the model manufacturers are starting to do that. I mean, they've been doing that for probably the last ten years, very slowly mm. bringing on a kit here, a kit there, a kit here, and you know, slowly moving to that that very reason of you, you're a young kid, you're a young person, you've never built one. Here's the easiest form of building it. Yeah, and uh, it's cool that they're doing it because when I was coming up. And I'm sure the same thing when you were coming up. There were no snap kits. You had to get that model cement. You had to get every little part and glue together. And the glue was just dripping everywhere. And you got it all over your hands. <laughs> and you had to learn the hard way to do it in a well-ventilated room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I didn't do mine in a... I, I mean, I did mine in my garage. But it... I had the garage door open too, just so I didn't have any light bulbs in there. So the natural light had to come in so I could see what I was doing. So I didn't have to worry about that with the first car. But yeah, the, the other cars after that, when I got back into it, I was building in my room. I was always pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> just, just let me keep building. I'm fine. If you don't hear from me for a while, then check on me. But yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> When we moved into here, I've, we built this room that we're in now. It's uh, it's basically a, a walled-off section of another room, and it's a very small office. Uh, it's my office and studio. I made the mistake of uh, building a model in this room. There's one small. window that's permanently <laughs> shut and a door oh, wow. there. <laughs> the entire place is soundproofed, so there's no Jeez. airflow. I don't right, remember right. that day. <laughs> you remember going in the room and then after that it's gone. I have I have the model. I know I did something. <laughs> but yeah, That's it's funny. a bit of a blank. Yeah, I, I tend to um because I, I build real quick. I don't like spending a lot of time on stuff, no matter what scale it is. So I tend to just build with super glue a lot. Mm. And I don't use um model cement or model glue or the slow drying glues i use something that i can get on that piece real quick it'll stay and then i move on to the next piece and i've come across sometimes that because the ho scale is so small you got to get right in there and you're like right in there and then you're like <laughs> looking over depending on how the light's coming in you're looking over and then you got that glue right there and those fumes are going right into your nose and you're yep. like oh shoot i gotta back away from this because i don't need my nostrils glued shut <laughs> yeah, I, I have a, hang on. because I have a similar thing, I don't like to be waiting for the glue, especially if I'm having to hold something. So I've been right. using uh, an extra thin cement and it's, uh, nice. it's a, it's a paint, if I can open it, it's a, it's a paintbrush applicator instead of the, mm -hmm. the tube, gives you an awful yeah. lot more precision. And because it's on the, the stick, you can stay a little bit further back and that can't kind right, of right, right. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I don't do it very often where i'm hovering over the glue glue like that but sometimes it's just the way that model is you have to yeah you have to get in there right. so yeah I'm, I'm thinking my eyesight must be gone because i'm getting older i might have to get a magnifying glass for that <laughs> i think i know i was talking to jenny uh i think a, a little over a month ago and I know she wears glasses, and yeah. I know I see you wear glasses. I don't wear glasses yet. I'm sure it's on its way, but I was building a car one day. 
um, like a car like this. And I was uh, adding spark plug wires, the the ignition wires, or oh. I don't know what you guys call it over there, but it's where the spark plug goes into the engine and goes to the distributor. I um, couldn't tell you, I, I don't even drive. I am terrible <laughs> with uh, cars. <laughs> so, the yeah, I was adding wires <laughs> and I was able to pull it off. And then I went to a, a model show and the model got stuck in the back seat somewhere and I lost it. Well, I forgot I even had the car. I never even looked for it because I didn't even, I had brought so many cars to this show that I forgot that car even existed for a little while. And then I'm cleaning out the car and I see it, it's all in pieces. And the a wires ripped off the engine. And so I said, oh, well, I'm gonna put those back. Never happened because I can't see them now. <laughs> I don't, and I don't have a magnifying glass and I refuse to get one because my brain says, I am not this old. I should not need to have <laughs> to use a magnifying glass. <laughs> Sadly, yeah, time, time does that to us all. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I'm the only one in my, my family and my, my mom and my dad and my brother that doesn't wear glasses. I've never needed to. But they all have like most of their life. And I just never did. And I'm thinking I must not be related to them because I should be wearing glasses. But now I'm thinking, oh, it just took a long time for it to kick in. That's all. Because I can't see those spark plugs now. And I'm going to need, if I want to add wires like that, I need to see where they're going. <laughs> I had a, an experience uh, as a kid. We were all sat in the lunchroom at school. And one of my friends said, I think I need glasses because I can't read the, the time on that uh, clock anymore. And I looked at where he was pointing and said, what clock? <laughs> like, that's when i knew i needed the glasses <laughs> i didn't know there was one there <laughs> well that's the problem with modeling too like the the, the older you get and the worse your eyesight gets the more you may not be able to model as small as you have been modeling you have to if you want to keep modeling you're gonna have to jump up to a to a higher scale um, yeah. to or a bigger scale to to be able to keep your passion going but i think we're the same age i think uh jennifer mentioned on what's neat that she was a certain age and i said oh yeah we're like the same age um so i think we're probably in the same age group too but we're we're, we're getting there we're getting to that age to where it's harder to build these little things than it used I to be <laughs> and harder to admit to yourself just what age we are. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem. I mean, I, I know, uh, at least in the United States, women hate to tell their age. I don't know if it's like that in the UK or not, but men don't typically have that problem. I, I don't know if it's just that we don't care that anybody knows, but I'm 41 and I don't act it and I don't think I look it. I don't know. And but because my brain says I don't feel it, that keeps me thinking I shouldn't need glasses. I shouldn't have to have this magnifying glass stuff like this so I can see what I'm building. Well, I'm, I'm kind of similar. I don't. I did. I think some women do still go with the old. Oh, you can't ask me how old I am, but we know how old you are. <laughs> we can see. <laughs> we can see you. <laughs> You're not invisible. You get some wrinkles in your eyes right here. You're not yeah, as young that, as you think you are. <laughs> that's it. But uh, I'm 40, and my brain still thinks okay. that 1990 was 10 years ago. I cannot <laughs> move on. It doesn't seem that long. <laughs> it really doesn't. I was told uh, the other day if if Marty McFly went back the same amount of time as he did in the film uh, uh, Back to the Future 1, if he did that now, he'd go to 1991. And it's like, my head yeah. cannot cope with this. It's not <laughs> right. fair. That would be a horrible movie. <laughs> Nobody would watch that movie. Nobody no, cares they... about that decade. <laughs> oh my goodness. It, it would just be slightly before grunge. <laughs> what yeah. What even was the 1991 <laughs> scene like? I, I really couldn't think. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I don't know about the UK, but yeah, America, it was grunge and gangster rap. That's what this scene was like all across the world. <laughs> yeah, we we didn't have it quite that early. It was still for us. Oh my goodness, it was still 
the end of well, it was basically the eighties part two. <laughs> Hi, are you still there? Sorry, did, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I think the weather is starting to get to it. We're having floods around here. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Hi. Uh, are we back? Out there for a little bit. Yeah, I hear yeah. you. Sorry about that. We're having floods around here at the moment, so I think the the weather might be starting to get to the internet. Hopefully, it'll stay together. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Well, and let us continue, so that's good. Yeah. I was talking to a gentleman the other day that... And we were only one state away, probably 300 miles or I don't know what it is in kilometers, but say 400 kilometers, maybe. I don't know. I don't um, know, but we, we were, use miles. We I couldn't far. tell you. Yeah, we weren't that far from each other, maybe like four hours away from each other. And our Internet together was so bad that we couldn't even keep the interview going. And it was it was horrible. And that doesn't make sense because we had clear skies over us on both sides. So it didn't make any sense that it was that bad. But hey, we're talking and we're all on the other side of the world from each other. So that's good. You, you've got to love that, haven't you? We, we can 3D print an apple, but we can't talk yeah. to someone that's just down the road. Right, 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 right. Exactly. It, where is this technology and why, why is it not working the right way in, in all aspects? <laughs> It's, it's a strange world we live in. So, uh, not only do you model, um, you help Jenny with her Monday Club. You're the co-host. Are you the editor for the videos too? Or? I am, yes. Jen, okay. Jen, Jen calls herself the, the front woman. She does everything in front of the camera. And I, I'm like right. the behind the scenes person who makes sure that it works. So, nice. yeah. I don't so much uh, co-host the Monday Club as I do the tech support, but don't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so a co-host. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm essentially, uh, if Jenny was Frasier, I'm, I'm Ross. <laughs> That's how it is. Right, right. I mean, you, you pretty much took over the, the day that she got her shot um, because yeah. she just wasn't feeling good. So you became the host and she was the co-host. <laughs> yeah, and she did not show. do a good job of that. <laughs> well, honestly, if you if you look at, I don't know if you look at it like I, I'm look I'm looking at it as an outside person. If you were to just read the comments and answer them instead of plug in a, a product or whatever, then that show your that episode could have went on for the next two hours because they would have just asked questions and you could have probably answered them maybe, um, but it could have been that way but i understand it's more her show and you're the tech part behind it yeah. so yeah if she's not feeling good might as well just shut it down i get it, that it, it was more that i was worried about her she was uh, right. unsteady on yeah, her feet and starting to fall right. asleep a lot and yeah. the problem is that there's a massive hole in the floor right next to where she decided to sit oh so i thought <laughs> we because we we uh, film it in the loft, so the loft yeah, yeah, ladder yeah. is right where she was. I thought, wow! At any moment, she's going to try and reach for something and fall down that uh, ladder. Yeah. So I thought the best thing to do is just get her to bed. That's why right, we have right, to cut yeah. it short. Otherwise, yeah, I could have just talked to people and uh, had a chat in the uh, in the comments, but I was worried about her, so we had to cut it. Short. Yeah, your your focus was somewhere else, not on the show, it was to make her feel better and get her well and. So that makes sense. Um, yeah. And it's probably a much better idea that you did that instead of just saying, okay, Jenny, you go down the stairs, go to bed. I've got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'd have been worried about her trying to get down the ladder. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. So um, did you have any help with her uh, train layout in the loft? Or was that all her? The, the Being most that you model... I the most help I did was stay out the way. Jen has, <laughs> Jen has a very clear image in her head. She, she's one of those uh, people that if you give her a problem, she can visualize it in her brain in a 3D environment and to rotate it, move it around and see exactly what she wants. So she had a complete floor plan of that entire thing in wow. her head and knew exactly what she wanted. And I thought the best thing I can do is just let her do it. So I stayed right. back. That's and, impressive. Uh, That's good. Oh, I am constantly amazed at the type of thing that she can do. But this room, she had a floor plan of it just like that. 
the moment she saw the space, like, right, we're going to have shelves. Yeah. They're going to go from the roof to, to the floor. We're going to put in a wall. It's going to be this thick. It's going to have uh, soundproofing in it and all this. And I thought, really? It's <laughs> <laughs> I, I see. I see some bricks. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And an empty room. <laughs> yeah, she's amazing at that. So I just let her get on with it. That's and awesome. hopefully she's going to uh, reciprocate when I start doing my little dioramas. And uh, I've got a lot of box files in the corner. I'm going to start uh, using them. Just to, like you can open it up and there's the diorama. It kind of falls yeah. out. Hopefully she's going to sit back and let me do that. Yeah, I was, I kind of, I have this display case behind me. Uh, that tall one. And at the bottom oh, yeah. shelf is two shelves of dioramas I've built. Oh, and yeah. I, I would like to have a better way to display those, but as right now it's just sitting in that display case mm -hmm. and it's at the bottom of the shelf. So nobody really looks down there. Nobody comes in here anyways, but me, but I mean, it would just be nice if it was like sitting on the wall maybe, and you could yeah. just see it as clear as day, but I have it in there. So it doesn't collect dust. Um, dust is a killer every, for models. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, every one of the display cases have glass covers on it or something to keep it away from the dust. So it's just these modules here, they're so dusty. Like, I don't, it's unbelievable. This has been sitting here for probably a year and you can, I don't know if you can see, I just yeah. scraped my finger and it's, oh my God. yeah, yeah, it's bad. But, but, <laughs> it's but what real bad. Well, I'm, I'm saying nothing this room. I dusted it a couple of weeks ago, and I would not care to run my finger over anything now. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's, there's so many electronics in here. It's like a dust magnet. So. Yeah. Well, the only thing I can say about an outside scene layout, like a train yard or a train set where it's meant to be uh, the look of the outside with the trees and the mountains or roads or whatever is dust is a common thing. So if you were to try to clean it up, it would be like dirt or, or road uh, grime, whatever. It mm. would look somewhat real. So if you were to move it to a show, like a convention, you wouldn't have to technically clean it because it would look authentic. I mean, that is maybe, true, yeah. maybe down the center of the lane, like, like clean it up like the tires are constantly driving over it. But the rest of the layout could just be dusty and dirty because that's the weather that happens outside. Yeah, the the real world. No one's going around and polishing it. It'd be nice if they did. Right. Yeah. Nobody's climbing on top of a roof of a building to to clean it. <laughs> we don't need to here in the UK. We just wait for it to rain and it all runs off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wish that was true. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was true. I mean. I, I'm I'm from California, and in California, it's got one season. It's summer all year round, so we have car shows and, and conventions and 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 uh, carnivals and and all kinds of stuff all year round out there on that side of the country. Then I moved to the other side, to the East Coast. Like and I'm in North Carolina now. We have all four seasons out here, and in spring, all the trees grow the leaves back that have shed it over the winter. And the pollen is so thick, you can eat it. I mean, you can see it like a fog, like a mist, like a like a smoke. It is so thick and it gets everywhere on all the houses, all the buildings, all the cars, all the roads. And we pray for that rain because that's the only way it's cleaning all that out. Yeah. And we get lucky every single spring. It will eventually rain. Sometimes it takes longer than others. But yeah, it's it's so bad out here on this side of the country. I don't know if it's like that in the UK. I've never been out there in spring. Um, spring is a problem for people like me. I, I grew up in the countryside, so we're all expected to be used to all of the, the pollen and things. And that's true. But I moved from the... Uh, east coast of England to the west coast of England and they have different trees with different pollen so now I get allergies all the time <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah I, I didn't have allergies until I moved here and I I really still don't but every once in a while uh the pollen's so thick I start coughing 
but that's that's not i don't even know if that's an allergy like allergies is where your eyes water and you can't breathe and you're just ah you feel you know, like your whole head is foggy yeah it and is you feel an allergy. like you're sick i don't yeah i don't feel like i'm sick i just cough and i'll cough for probably two months straight yep. and, and so i don't know if it's an allergy but it didn't happen in california now it does happen out here so it's my allergy it, I can guarantee it's an allergy because you've got the same symptoms I have. Hello. I think I lost you again. I, I can hear you, Your but I can't see. Up. Yeah, and so, I don't hear you. Oh, um, hmm. Must be that storm. Yeah, I, I, I can hear you, but I just want I to still don't hear you. Ah, can you hear oh. me now? Oh, there you are. I see you. Again. Yeah. Yes. That storm you're getting is messing I, stuff up. I don't know what I don't know what happened. I opened the chat and then it just sort of kicked it back into into moving. Okay, <laughs> weird. Right. But yeah, cool. I, what you described <laughs> is exactly the allergies that I have. So yeah, it is. It's just annoying. Right. But what can you do? You, yeah. You've got to live your life. Yeah. You exactly. You got to keep on going. And uh, and because of that pollen and because of how uh, rural north carolina is with trees um i think we got more trees in this state than we do in the whole state of california which is four times bigger than north carolina um but yeah because of that there's so much dust it's dusty all year round and i can't get rid of it yeah that won't help either yeah but, but like i said that i don't that's, try that's the real <laughs> world <laughs> Yeah, that's why there's display cases with glass covering, so I don't have to worry about the dust. Jen does the same thing um, with all of hers. That's good. I don't know that I've ever seen her uh, her uh, 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 model display uh, stuff. It's more just her tray layout that I've ever seen. Which she has fine. a she has but a few videos that, she, that show more. Puts it in display case. Oh, yeah. well, I haven't looked at every video. I've seen a few. Oh, um, I don't think few, anyone's but looked not at every one of them. I think <laughs> her and me may be the only people who've ever watched all of her videos. Because <laughs> she can't. Right. There's, there's far too many. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good thing, too, because um, you guys have a lot more subscribers than I do. But I've only been doing this for a little less than a year. Uh, next month. It'll be my year of this podcast. Wow. So I, I don't expect to have a lot. But at the same time, she's been doing it for several years. Yeah, it's about um, nine. I don't know about the Monday Club, but just making videos in general. Uh, she's been making the videos for nine years. She actually started her videos. Wow. So, so that I had more practice for editing. <laughs> I was trying to get into oh, uh, get, get better at editing. So I'd get into filmmaking. And I needed uh, stuff to edit. So we started right. uh, doing a few small, they were like five minutes long uh, videos about just reviewing uh, whatever she picked up of model trains. Yeah. And it's grown from there. So nine years later, it's like, wow, this is thing. Right. And, that's, but it's that's all really good. come together and become big with the Monday Club and all that in the last uh, 18 to 24 months. It hasn't actually well, been that long. Well, you guys put out, what, two to three videos a week. Right. Yep. I mean, you got the live stream, which is on Monday and then like review videos and, and just talk about videos about trains. The other two videos. Yeah, that's a lot of work. I do one video a week, just one ep one interview video. I upload a week and that's already too much for me to want to do. I can't imagine doing three videos and because you're not just recording it straight and then uploading. You got to edit all that. Yep. That's a lot of the editing. Work. The editing takes uh, for but Jen's videos are about uh, fifteen to thirty minutes uh, on average. Mm -hmm. Forty-five if uh, I can't get her to shut up. And uh, <laughs> each one of those takes me between two and six hours to edit because I've got to go through all of the stuff, take out wow. all of the. You wouldn't believe how many flubs there are in one of her videos. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, well, no, of I course, yeah, because you you edit, you you'll notice your your own. <laughs> And it's the same with any. If anyone was talking for that length of time, they're going to have a few uh, repeats. So I've got to go through yeah. it, find all the bits that uh, need to be taken out, condense the video down, find all the archive footage for whenever she mentions a previous project, and all yeah. it all adds up. <laughs> but 
the best part is most of the time it doesn't feel like that length of time. You can just get through it, and it's uh, it's an enjoyable process. But well, what, some once you learn the system, you know, like you obviously have, the system mm -hmm. becomes a lot more easier to navigate through, and you know where everything is, so you know how to maneuver stuff and pull stuff here and there and wherever. Absolutely, make it work quicker. I'll be honest; these uh, interview videos. I just started doing a, a opening monologue telling the viewers who I have on and then a ending monologue, what I thought about the guest. Um, and that is all just being uh, edited by pausing the live stream and then having you or the guest come on and replaying it or starting the uh, unpausing it. And then after we're done, I pause it again. So that editing is like super generic and dumb. It's like a baby could do it probably. And then from there, I put it in my Windows computer and that has a, a video editor. Yeah. And I just put my logo of the podcast in front and then back. And that that uh, little um, that little video editor has graphics that you can put over the logo or whatever and music you can put in the background. Yeah. So the interview part, I don't do any editing with. So even these two uh, freezes ups, those are going to be in the video. <laughs> but I mean, I so in the very beginning, before I had any editing of information on anything, I recorded a little one minute uh, uh, like PSA of of um, what this uh, podcast was going to be about. And I started recording myself and I'd messed up. I'm like, darn it. Okay, delete that video, start over. And then I wrote it out because I couldn't remember everything. And I only wanted it to be one minute. I wanted to be in and out real quick. And even in that one minute video, it took me 15 tries to make that one minute video, even though I wrote it down. It's like I wrote it down and I couldn't say that word the exact right way I wanted to. And it sounded stupid or sounded dumb. And I was like, oh man, I got to start all over again. And I'll start from the beginning and start from the beginning. It took me 15 tries just to make a one minute video. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. It's just yeah. one of those annoying things about about talking, basically. Your brain, it's kind of uh, developed to do that. And sometimes it goes, no, we haven't got there yet. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Well, even when you do get there, then it's like you have too much confidence and you purposely mess yourself up, not even knowing you're doing it. You're like, what? I had this. What happened? <laughs> yeah. I know, from my own job, I, I know all about that. Don't end. <laughs> you've, you've got uh, all of your jokes. They're memorized. You've gone through them. It's going to be great. You know these uh, jokes work. You get on stage, you mispronounce yeah. a key word and no one laughs. <laughs> It's, it's funny that you say you're a comedian because I live my whole life, even some of my models, um, I add comedy or some kind of funniness to it because my whole life I grew up with comedy and comedy is what I strive to live by. I don't take anything seriously because I think life is one big joke. And yep. everybody that lives their life seriously uh, tends to bother me over a little bit of time because they're too serious. They can't let up. They can't loosen up. And I always thought I should have, right when I graduated high school, started becoming a comedian and, and did that long, journeyous, hard work of grinding your way from club to club to club to finally get famous or finally get good and recognized to start getting paid to be a comedian. Because everything about comedy and i mean everything i love i love it and i even put it in some of my models there's like the funny scenes that you can create because you have that sense of humor you have that ability to think outside of you know like a ghostbusters car you have a ghostbusters car and then you put like star wars figures next to it or something <laughs> and then you're like this is a deleted scene from either one of the two movies I know it. I've seen it. It's right there. That's that's the photo, <laughs> you know. And a lot of people that take things too seriously, they're like, "That doesn't make any sense. Those two, the, those two would never happen." And then you're in your mind, you're, you're the funny person. You're like, 
come on now, really? <laughs> Obviously, it would never happen. That's not the point. The point is, I made it happen. <laughs> I'm telling you a story that never happened, and it's funny. <laughs> well, that's the other thing, sir. Uh, well, clearly, the, those two made-up things couldn't could never exist in a <laughs> Right. They're made up. They can do what they want. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Star Wars isn't real. Neither is Ghostbusters. The fact that those two exist means that they could do crossovers. <laughs> exactly. Although Klingons are real because I've seen them on TV. Exactly. I've seen them in real life at a convention. I went to a, I think it was an academy of Star Wars because there's everybody dressed up as, or not Star Wars, Star Trek. There's I knew which one you were dressed about. up as, yeah, as some kind of Star Trek personality so it must Excellent. have been a academy that i was stumbled into so i know those are real <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> yeah but, but see uh, that's go on, i was gonna say that's the thing with uh comedy is if you know how to present it in a model fashion of any kind you're already one step further than the regular modeler that only sees the model for what it is yeah Absolutely. And uh, to, what I was going to say, it's, it's funny that you mentioned comedy and uh, how you should have gone into it. Don't think that you you passed the time. I started getting into it just before the pandemic hit. Basically, I decided that oh, wow. I, want, I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. And the universe went, yeah. well, we're going to see about that. And then locked the entire <laughs> yeah, country <it> down. <laughs> so it's like, there's the ultimate heckle. I can't get any worse than this. So I'm going on that way. I actually started doing it for live shows on the internet. Just a, oh, a wow. few friends and just to get the practice in and get used yeah. to holding the microphone and actually talking and not being able to edit out uh, any flubs. Right, right, right. And uh, a lot of people have uh, said the same thing uh, to, that I just said. You're never too old. If you want to get out there, go and do it. It's yeah, well... I, I I do love it. I, I love and I like dark humor and I would love to somehow slide in some dark humor with this podcast or just humor, like just jokes, just riffing on somebody and, and then riff back. I think it would be awesome. But at the same time, most of my audience or most of my guests, I don't know them, know them. Yeah. Like, I don't know you. I know of you and I'm getting to know you. I don't know how far I can push a subject or, or a topic or something. And, yeah. and most modelers don't have that comedy sense of humor like like you and I probably do. So you have to kind of stick with seriousness of the hobby because if you just say, oh yeah, that one model you made just sucked. It was horrible. You should have threw it away right when you started. You know, just as a joke, they'd probably think you were 100% serious. Yeah. And that so, you hate their work. <laughs> well, of course it sucks. It's a vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Space balls, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, it's funny because that movie, Space Balls by Mel Brooks, the heroes drive a Winnebago with wings into space. I found a 3D CAD for that, but it's cartoonish and I don't want it to be cartoonish. I want nice. to build that Winnebago in HO scale. I want it oh. so bad. It's called Eagle 5. I want it so bad. That would be, <laughs> a, that would be a fantastic model. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's the, a basic Winnebago with just wings. <laughs> the color scheme, if I remember correctly, isn't it the same or very similar color scheme to the one from Breaking Bad? Because that would be an uh, yes, that would similar. be an amazing yeah. crossover. <laughs> I right. I did see a gentleman. His name is Eric. Uh, Eric. 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 Something. He's from Europe, and he builds diorama scenes that are unbelievable. And he built a small Breaking Bad scene. He's got the two characters standing outside the Winnebago with the Winnebago in the background in the desert, and he just writes Breaking Bad as the subject. And you're like, I see it. That's it. You're right. That's all you have wow. to say. That's so cool. And he builds so many crazy, uh, familiar dioramas, like from TV shows or movies. And he's amazing. I want to get him on the podcast, but he's uh, he's older and he doesn't understand the Zoom thing too much. He said, I barely figured out how to use Facebook, let alone trying to do an interview. So I think I'll pass for now. <laughs> That's a shame because uh, 
If he's got, if he's managed yeah. Facebook, he should be able to press a button to get on Zoom. You would the, think there is a web browser <laughs> version. Yeah, I mean, I've talked, I've asked so many people. I've, I think I'm into um, maybe close to fifty interviews, and I probably message two hundred people, and I only get a quarter of the those two hundred people to that want to do it. I've even had some guests do it twice because I've ran out of guests to to come up with. And I kind of want to keep it more towards like miniature modeling, but yeah. I'm now having to venture out to any kind of model just to get a guest on. Like if they do a uh, 125th scale cars or 143rd scale cars, or they do sci-fi or boats or planes or trains or whatever, you know, it's it, I'm having to do anything. I I, I don't want to get into RC cars, like the big RC cars that can mm. race on top of your grass or whatever. I don't really want to get into that, but if I have to. I'll have to do that. <laughs> My goodness, I just I can see that now because uh, the once you get into RC cars, it's it's a slippery slope. You'll be onto oh, yeah. uh, robot walls and battle bots before you know <laughs> yeah, it. Right, right, right. I I seen this one video. No kidding, it's the most ridiculous thing I've seen in a long time. But these RC boats are big enough for you to climb inside and control them with a steering wheel and a bunch of buttons. That's not, it's a, so that's not a model by that point. That's a boat. <laughs> it is a boat, but it's it's scaled down to like you take off the bow of the ship, the top part, and then it's like the hatch. So you step into it and you put that back on top, and now you're in this like one eighteen scale life size warship. <laughs> oh, I'm, so I'm sorry, but once you get to that point, it's basically just a motorized canoe. Yeah, well, I've seen I've seen that. <laughs> not that you can fit into it, but I believe if they designed it to fit into it, I've seen uh, RC planes that are the biggest scale RC planes ever. That you could literally fit yourself a skinny version of yourself into that plane and let it fly off. Now they don't put people in it, but they're big enough to put somebody in, oh, and wow. they're real life RC planes. And you're thinking. That is insane. That is so big. It would take a trailer or multiple trailers just to haul that thing from a show to show because it's so big. Yeah, you could fit into this plane and not have to control it with a remote. You can just put some steering into it and buttons, and you could, you know, control it if you want to be inside of that. But at it, that point, you've that, got to wonder why are they transporting it in trucks? Why not just fly it to the place? <laughs> right, right. Land and every like. Ten miles to recharge the batteries and then take even, off again. Even so, that yeah, that would that would be an amazing thing. So, how did you transport this here? Well, I, I just flew it. I would love that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, like where's your trailer? We gotta unpack this. We gotta pack this thing back up. Trailer? No, there's no trailer. I flew this thing from my house. <laughs> yeah, where we're going, we don't need trailers. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't even sit inside. I just hopped right on top like a horse. <laughs> I flew it out. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. See, now that's something somebody could model. They could take like a a a one sixty four scale, like a Hot Wheel size airplane, and then put like a Barbie on it, and say, "This is what <laughs> we're doing. This is my model. It's a fifty foot woman." Riding a plane, <laughs> and then have it fly like around Wonderland in Germany, just coming in for a landing and taking back off. You're like, that's a 50 foot woman <laughs> riding a plane from country to country. <laughs> Now I'm just seeing someone uh, fixing a Barbie dream house to a drone and just remaking <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, you could easily motor motorize fake balloons <laughs> to have drones attached to them. That would be so cool. <laughs> I did see um, there was somebody that modeled that either an HO or N scale, uh, that up house with the balloons, and it was on like an invisible wire, like a probably like a fishing string. Yeah, like a fishing, an invisible wire to like lift it up and down, and it was pretty cool. Oh, Just the idea of it was moving and lifting up with all the balloons on top of it, it was a neat idea. Oh, But see, that's、God. another thing. Just being creative with your models, you can you can 
add stuff to it to make it move. It doesn't have to drive like the RC models that are like in Wonderland and and, and uh, a lot of people say. You can just add a little movement to like up and down or side to side. Just yeah. brings a little bit of extra to your model. Absolutely. That I'd love to do. I think this I lost one. you again. <laughs> Hello. This is number three or four. Let's see if this one. There you oh. I saw you. There you are. Yeah, I brought the chat back up and it brought it back. That's how I do it. That, I'll, I'll remember that. But yeah, that's the kind of yeah. thing that uh, I want to talk to Jen about when I build this Spitfire. Putting it on a, a mechanism, just letting it fly. And a smaller, a smaller yeah. just on a little invisible wire. It, it shouldn't be too hard. Right. But probably not. Like, and then hmm. on top of that, you could, you could probably add batteries and a motor to keep the propeller spinning. Or does it have, is that a jet plane or does it a propeller plane? Oh, the, the Spitfire, it's a World War II uh, yeah. propeller. It's a- So it's propeller. Okay, so yeah, yeah you can get a, a little single motor prop and on the, front. the propeller spin. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it doesn't have to spin fast, it could just spin. I'm looking at the back with the, the outline and it looks almost empty on the inside. So there should be plenty of space for a little motor. In. That's a good idea. Yeah. See, there yeah. you go, and it can spin around the the roof, and maybe the propeller might actually move. It, it could just be literally hanging from a string, and then you turn it on, and it spins fast enough to like make it move. It might be too quick. You don't want it to fly around in circles oh. that fast, so you might just. Well, I'll, I'll see. I'll experiment. Slower. If I break it, I can always get another yeah. one. <laughs> it's not. It's not like models of Spitfires yeah. are hard to find right. in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> right there was a there was a guest i was talking to they were really really like they loved this type of model they were using cranes like the cranes that lift big concrete building walls up or lift things out of the ground or on top of buildings the huge cranes with the long arms yeah and that's all they built in ho scale and they made every part of that crane movable so like the wires inside would move it could lower the 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 thing down and lift stuff up and he's he asked me do you think you would ever build something like this and i said that is not my thing at all i would never purposely build one of these and then if i did i would do it my way i wouldn't do it the way you would build it i would do some kind of candy metal flip paint job all over it chrome out the whole entire arm the tracks I'd chrome out the tracks, make it look like a completely custom, unusable crane. And then the world of the crane builders would hate me because I'd purposely do it just so <laughs> it wouldn't be usable. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> I said, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> but I said, oh, yeah. if I were to ever do it, if I were to, ever, if anybody said, hey, let me send you this. Build it the way you want to. That's exactly how I'm doing it. You see that that I would take that as a dare. Build it how you want to. Well, yeah. in that case, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was talking to another guy that that builds just ambulances, paramedic vehicles, and he said, "Do you think you would ever build a, an ambulance?" And I said, "Well, I kind of built the Ghostbusters car. Uh, is that that's sort of the same thing?" He goes, "No, like a true ambulance." I said. I don't really see the reason to do that. And he goes, but if I sent you one, would you? And I said, I, I would, I, I'd do it my way. <laughs> I would <laughs> slam it to the ground and put some big, huge wheels underneath it and put some candy paint up. It wouldn't be a paramedic car after I was done with it. <laughs> maybe fill the whole backside where the patients go in with speakers and maybe put real sound in it. <laughs> Make it completely destroyed and not usable, whatever. Like Pimp My Ride. It'd be like a Pimp My Ride version. Oh my goodness. I just had the, <laughs> the darkest uh, thing there. You pimp out a hearse, the Pimp My Final Ride. That's. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what's funny. There is a few people in this country, I don't know about your country, that have done that to their hearses. They'll put some big chrome wheels on it, put underglow like green glow or blue glow under the car give it a crazy paint job put a huge stereo system in it and 
I've even seen one guy put hydraulics on it to make it look like a lowrider where it bounces up and down. Wow. In their hearse. And I thought, now that's taking it to the next level. That's going out in style. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about going out in style. I actually uh, have it in my uh, instructions that I am to be five minutes behind whatever time that the funeral is supposed to start because I will literally be late to my own funeral. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> yep. That is great. I almost don't want to have a funeral. I said, if I knew I was going to die, say say you knew the exact day you were going to die. You're just so old or you're just so sick, whatever. You, you weren't going to make it past the next day. I either want to jump out of a plane like you're going to parachute, but never open the chute. Just jump to my death. But I want to be like so high to where I can free fall for a good 10 minutes or five straight minutes or 10 straight minutes, just in pure joyness of being up all by myself, tumbling into my death. Or I wanna rent a supercar like a Lamborghini, Ferrari or McLaren and just drive it straight into a wall. So like 200 miles an hour, just straight into a wall because there I'm going the same speed almost, either I'm falling or I'm driving that same speed and then I, Hit it dead on. <laughs> but it has to be fast enough to where you know you're not going to survive it. Because if you did survive it, that would suck. That would suck, yes. <laughs> I think if I knew the exact time that I was going to die, I would go to the House of Parliament because it's illegal to die in Parliament. <laughs> and oh, I want to be great. Like, how, how are they, they going to prosecute me? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That, that's a model idea. Just have somebody like getting shot <laughs> right in the front doors <laughs> that almost would be happened. a great model but it would be a model <laughs> that that almost happened a few years ago my goodness there wow. was a the guy he had issues and uh, turned up the parliament they, they stopped him but it could have happened but i still like the idea is it right Jeez. you're gonna I make a, it though. yeah yeah you're gonna make a law that <laughs> you can't prosecute someone if they do it well i'm going to do it Right. <laughs> I'll be the person. Yeah. No, see, that, that's Come great me. because that sense of humor is like my sense of humor. I love that. I love that idea. I thought about buying a hearse out here in the States, like an old 60s style hearse that really looks like an authentic hearse and dressing up as a grim reaper and going around to like the old folks home, the retirement homes and just drive around in circle point to the people rocking their chair outside and go you're next oh <laughs> this, uh, that not quite that but uh, i used to do a news review show on youtube where i'd uh, go through the the weird stuff in the news and one guy caused a heart attack in his care home by dressing up on halloween as the grim reaper and just That's wandering awesome. around the Good care home. <laughs> see he's my type of guy <laughs> so you, he was getting in the spirit of things <laughs> oh, yes, <my>. he was. <laughs> we are so we have a a, a, a un, uh, It's nice to find someone else who's got a unique the uh, dark sense of humor. Yeah. Oh, I love dark because I you can go light. Like I love the comedian Jim Gaffigan, but he's not dark. He's very very uh, family friendly. He doesn't cuss. He doesn't tell any dark jokes. He's very funny. But he's he's very he's he, anybody can listen to him and never yeah. have an issue listening to him. But then there's the darker comedians that will that have no line. There's no border you can cross that that they can't break through. And that's me. I I love just saying, look, just because you don't find it funny doesn't mean it's not funny. Yes, it's funny to me, it's funny to somebody else, just not to you. So it doesn't have to be funny to you. It doesn't have to be funny to everybody. But it's funny nonetheless, just because it's not funny to you. Yes, that, that's that been my way of doing comedy. It's, like, it's all right to not like things. You, you're, quite yes. a, you're quite entitled to not like things. Right. But I like things. Yes. And I'm going yes. to talk about those things. Right. There's, um, there's a, a, a movie comedy duo called Jay and Silent Bob. Yep. And they have a lot of movies, or quite a few movies, and I want to model that quick stop that they stand in front of. And I want to put those two figures. I want the quick stop here and the video store here and them standing in the middle selling drugs. I want to build that in HO scale. 
I don't think a lot of people are going to know what that's from because it's a it's a, a certain kind of group of people that love those movies. All the rest of the people don't know what those movies are at all. But I, I know what those movies are, and I love those movies. Yeah, I uh, I I think Jen and I would both not only know what that was, but like it. <laughs> yes. But I, I like modeling a lot of movie scenes too. I don't know, like I did the Flintstones one, and I've got, I'll, I'll go and show you. I've got several other movie things I've done that I truly love because I'm a, I'm a movie buff. I love movies. But I've got um, the Ghostbusters oh. cars, NHO with the how, with the firehouse. Is that Ecto One and, and Ecto Two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. I, well, actually, there's three of them. So the, the third one is not this new movie coming out in November, but it's the video game version. So oh wow, you got Ecto One, and then if, if I take this car away, Ecto Two, which has all that extra stuff on top and a lot more decals, and then this one, it has a different uh, roof rack with the big old pod in the middle. Yeah. That's from the video game. So they made a video game in the '90s. And the video game one looked like this. So yeah, the, the, if I the game, to... I have the game. I've never, I've never actually got yeah. around to playing it. <laughs> I just right. realized. So it's supposed to look like this. It's like Ecto one, and then Ecto two, and then the video game Ecto. That is. And then fantastic. the firehouse up there, and then I got the American Graffiti movie scene there. Oh wow! And then the Back to the Future clock house. Yes, Hill Valley. I I know that one. Yeah. And then this hotel in, is in that houses the from the movie Psycho. Oh, that yeah, is amazing. Hotel. And then this one, which is a lot less recognizable, is the Munsters house from oh. the TV show The Munsters. I, and I even have yeah. uh, the car. Oh, the car that is that goes wonderful. On in front of that right there. Yeah. <laughs> but I like making movie scenes. And so I have a diorama here of Marty McFly's house from Back to the Future. Wow. And then the DeLorean sits right here because he hit the trash can that's right there. He did, there. yeah. And I, <laughs> yeah. And then I even built the, the bus Olympians. that uh, tries to kill Doc. Yeah. But with that, too, I have. The cargo van with the DeLorean coming out of the back. Yeah, I, I noticed that. Right and there. the yellow submarine as well. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I got a lot of movie cars. Then that's the Griswolds uh, from Family Vacation, Christmas Vacation, <laughs> Station Wagon with the tree on the top. Fantastic. But yeah, I got a lot of movie stuff because I, I like movies. I like making things that people will look at and be like, oh, I remember that. Oh, how cool is that? So I kind of like the the wow factor in my models. Yeah. It's, and then if cool. you you can tell a little story with it, and it makes a little bit better, you know. Yeah. I, w I was thinking of now you mentioned movies. There's a shot in the Blues Brothers where they're in that uh, rundown uh, house next to the uh, not house uh, their their apartment next to the uh, yeah 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 next to the, the railway line thing. Yeah, I've got that in my head as one diorama that I want to do, and I've not never got around to doing it. But I think you've given me the impetus. I'm going to actually do that. Do it. That would be neat because mm. that train went by that window of that apartment, that tiny little apartment, like every five minutes, just rattling the whole inside yep. of that apartment. And I don't know how anybody could sleep in that apartment, but. <laughs> Elway or whatever, who, whichever one did actually fall asleep for a little bit in, in the scene of, of that train going by. Thinking, think How's that possible? I just think that would be a great thing to, to model. It would be pretty cool. I'm not sure exactly how you would do it, but if you can figure out how to do it, that'd be awesome. Mm. And not a lot of people will recognize exactly where that's from, but you would know. And the few exactly. movie fans would know. And those that do know, they'll they recognize it and they'll think, yeah, that's good. Right. That, yeah. That's that's the the effect I go for when when I'm trying to do something. Like, those that get it, get it. Yeah. And everyone else, exactly. Oh, 
that's something that's why I want to do that Jay and Silent Bob scene. I know there's very few people that are going to get it, but I want to do it. And then even the space falls Winnebago. There's not a lot of people that are going to recognize that's from that movie if they even remember that movie, but I'll remember it and I'll love it. Yes, <laughs> and at the end of it, we're putting something of ourselves into the model anyway. It's like yes. that's part modeling. So there you right. are. It's a bit. I would. It would be neat if I could somehow figure out, and it'd probably be life size. No, it'd probably be bigger. It'd probably be twelve feet or or fifteen feet tall. But to do a mega made from Spaceballs. <laughs> oh my goodness, that would be that would be quite something. <laughs> it would be ridiculous. And how would you take it to a show to show? But I mean, the few people that know what it is, they would get it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I I like movies so much. I want to capture scenes of it and, and and model it. Yeah. And then if I can bring humor to it too, that'd be great. But yeah, that's what I'm about. And, and it's good to see that that you have this somewhat same interest. You know, you you yeah. know you have ideas that you would like to get done, and I think. If you motorize that plane and it did go around Jenny's layout, that'd be a really neat idea. I, I really like the idea, and hopefully she'll get on board with it. Right, right, right. Well, that's great. Um, other than that, since you edit her videos and you're also a modeler, you're a comedian, um, I only know of you from, or what I can see from you from this Facebook page of yours, which doesn't tell me much. Do you have your own YouTube channel? Uh, I have two. Oh, nice. But, yeah, one of them is uh, Game Hammer Classic Gaming. As you might notice, I have a few uh, video games that I do uh, that a load so of. Work. Yeah, it's uh, PlayStation 2. The entire oh, wow. room is full of PlayStation 2 video games. I have stuff for other consoles and. Uh, old computers and things uh, all around me. Where, where is it? One that uh, people of a certain age from uh, America might recognize, the Texas Instruments TI-99. Little things like Why that. do you have that? <laughs> because funnily enough, I grew up with the Amstrad CPC. It was a, a big con uh, computer here. But my uncle, he got into computers a few years earlier, and the one that was great for education and learning was the Texas Instruments. So oh, okay. I ended up having a bit of an affinity for the for the TI, and that's why I've got one. Yeah, makes yeah, sense. I, I do all kinds of reviews of uh, old stuff on that channel. My other channel is uh, ZJKR, and uh, it's got a vlog on it. It's got my comedy routines on it, and uh, it's just where I talk about life and uh, comedy, basically. <laughs> so that's me on YouTube. That's awesome. It's funny you say you, you have your own channel to do vlogs and what, because it seemed like since the pandemic or right before it, a lot of at least American comedians that are famous today all started their own podcast channel. It yeah. blew up like the beginning of last year, like out of nowhere. And and I mean, I, I know Joe Rogan. I, list, I used to listen to Joe Rogan before he went to Spotify or something. I don't have an account there, so I don't listen to him anymore. But I used to watch every one of his videos on YouTube every time it came out. And he would have comedians on. He has everybody on his on his podcast. But he would always tell every comedian, oh, you need your own podcast. And it's like all of a sudden they all listened and said, oh, I got to get one. I got to get one. I got to start one. And I listened to a few of them. I don't listen to every one of them. And it's funny that you have your own podcast. You're a comedian. You have your own podcast about life and what you're doing. And that's exactly what theirs are. It's like life and what they're doing. And they have other comedian guests and other famous people on or whatever. And I think I think it's cool because it gets in the mind of the comedian. I mean, being that I like comedy, you only see them on TV or, you know, on the internet, but you don't get to know them. But that this way, this podcast way or this blog way is bridging that gap of knowing the person that you like listening and watching on TV or whatever. Absolutely. And it gets you that little bit closer to them, which sometimes is a good thing. Sometimes uh, it can kind <laughs> right. of ru ruin the mystique, but uh, I think for the most part, it's a good thing. No, I think it's a good thing because you, you, 
Like one of my favorite comedians of all time is a guy named Je uh, Anthony Jeselnik. He's an American comedian, but he's super dark. I mean, he'll talk about death. And by the time he's done talking about it, you'll be laughing and hate him at the same time. <laughs> I love that. I, I love the fact that you can think, oh my God, this guy's going to hell. He's going to hell right now. <laughs> but he's funny. And I'm going to keep watching him until he gets to hell. <laughs> because he is so dark. And I look at his way of doing it, of com comedy, and I think that's exactly what I want to do. That, that, that exact same way. And those topics... Oh my gosh, if you haven't seen him, you gotta at least watch like one YouTube video of anything he's done. It's so dark. It's very bad. And I love every bit of it. <laughs> it sounds perfect. <laughs> I'll look him up. Yeah. Um, but if you could, um, I want to put in the description for everybody to uh, get to know you and see what, you, uh, what you're doing and follow you. If you can send me your YouTube channels, and I'll put them in the description of this episode below for everybody to watch. Yeah, but, no um, problem. Yeah, it was it was a pleasure talking to you. And it's been I, a pleasure I, to I talk like to you too. Talking to you, <laughs> I really <laughs> like talking to you. You and me, modeling, comedy, movies. Oh, we yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. This is it's great. All, it's always nice to, to meet to someone again. on the same wavelength. <laughs> Yeah, it, oh, it definitely is because I'm not putting down any of the other interviews, but all the other interviews don't have this level of understanding of comedy. <laughs> I can tell you that. And comedy is my whole life. So I really appreciate this interview. <laughs> well, it's been fun. Yeah. I enjoyed yeah, it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I enjoyed it too. Thank you. If you want to stay on, I'll end this uh, episode and. Um, we can then say our goodbyes or whatever. All right. But yeah, everybody watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'll have all the links in the description below so you can follow her, watch her, and then, uh, hopefully enjoy what she's doing as much as I enjoy talking to her because this was great. But don't forget, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And leave a comment if you have any questions because either I can answer them or she can answer them if she sees them or whatever. But either way, you'll get an answer somehow, some way. And uh, until next episode, you guys have a great night. See you later. All right, everybody. So that was Zoe Kirk Robinson. We had a good half hour talk after the episode was over. Nothing to do about models. So I kind of thought, um, rather than put that all on the video, uh, to keep it more model uh, oriented that we would end it and I just talked to her after but uh, I tell you what like I said at the end of the interview this was a great episode for me I don't know about for you guys listening or even watching but everything I love she loves modeling comedy movies those three things right there is what my whole life is about. I love comedy. I've said it in a couple of episodes. I love modeling. And I like, obviously, turning my models from movie scenes into real life. And comedy, I mean, she's a comedian. Uh, how much better can you get? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a comedian yet. Maybe soon, maybe someday I will be an actual comedian. But I am always looking at uh, funny stuff and I make fun of anything and everything all around me all the time so uh, it was so nice to talk to somebody and like she said that we get the same thing we're on the same wavelength on the same page um, it was really cool and she's a modeler so you can't you can't ask for any more than that that's what this whole podcast is about is to get inside the modeler's head get to know them, understand what they're thinking. And me and her think the same way. So how awesome was that? But like always, don't forget all the descriptions to everything about her is going to, everything that I have is going to be in the description below. As well as my Patreon, if you choose to take a look at it. Um, 
And with that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe or watch any one of these videos and subscribe to this middle one. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. See you later. Thank <laughs> you.